Welcome. My name is Larry Alford and I'd like to share with investors some of the most important things that I learned during the last 30 years while I worked inside the investment industry. These are the tricks of the trade designed to make the investment industry richer by cheating if we have to while making our customers poorer. First some essential math for every 1% that you pay out in investment fees, you are giving up about 20% of the future capital years down the road. Or look at it another way. For every 2% fee charged to your investment accounts, you will cut your future retirement capital in half over a 35-year time frame. And in most cases, the other half of your life savings goes to five or six large financial institutions in Canada. They are the strongest in the world, after all. We're going to look at some tricks of the trade designed to take away two, three, four, or even more percentage points of your rightful investment returns by cheating you out of various investment industry promises. I call this winter steal all economics and our industry assumes that you'll never learn this stuff because they will certainly never tell you. The first question that's vital to throw in at this point is could we be living in a winner steal all economy? Are the economic and political rules the same today as they were in your father's day? Or are there new dangers to watch out for? Is there a new game being played upon us all? Second question is, are the rules and laws simply directed downward at you and other citizens? Or do the major financial institutions even have to follow rules and laws? Are certain people able to avoid rules entirely and remain above the law? Some perspective here. Some of you remember the Los Angeles riots of 1992. This image shows people in the streets looting and stealing anything they can take. This is what a winner-take-all economy looks like. On that first day, Wednesday, April 29, 1992, the police were badly outnumbered. They made the temporary decision to not re-enter the neighborhood in south-central L.A., and they left it totally unprotected. The result was that people discovered there would be zero repercussions for their actions and they turned the neighborhood into a winner steal all zone. Now let's look at today's economy where the most ruthless people get the greatest rewards without any prosecutions. Would this be a winner steal all economy today? Despite world finances being, finances being brought down with toxic mortgage investments and derivatives, there have been zero prosecutions. It's, is it because the police and justice do not have the tools or the moral courage to enter those elite neighborhoods? Here in Canada, we also see zero prosecutions at the level of high-value economic crime. Let's say crimes in a hundred million dollar and above levels, give or take a few million. The RCMP in Canada and a few securities commissions have prosecuted very, very small fish. 5 million, 10 million, 20 million. But they've left 100% of large scale systemic crimes often go uninvestigated and always unprosecuted. And it's you that are being cheated daily by the large scale systemic crimes. And it's you that have zero police protection for these same abuses. So the question becomes, are we at the winner steal all stage in economics? Is it clear to bankers and brokers that there will be no police and no prosecution, that there's no punishment for whatever they do to cheat or steal? Wouldn't that be a shame? It would then be the same winner steal all mentality that we saw in Los Angeles when the parties know that the police will not be acting. Now I would like everyone to put on their thinking cats and I'll walk you through some examples specific to Canada and try to nail it down a little closer just how they do what they do in a winner steal all economy. The greatest magic trick 
ever played upon Canadians is the granting of exemptions to the law to investment people. Investment people go to regulators, whom they also pay, and they ask for permission to violate the law when they're selling you products and services that would otherwise be illegal. Here we see the Alberta Securities Commission shows 4,800 results from a search for the word exemptions, including Goldman Sachs with an exemption order on the very first page in Alberta. Here's part of the advisor shall deal fairly honestly and in good faith with its client rule, followed very closely by the director may grant an exemption to this rule. The other neat trick is if you deal with a retail financial advisor or someone calling themselves an advisor in Canada, the information that they're hiding from you is that they do not have to have an advisor license to call themselves an advisor even though the word advisor is a legal license category with the government. You're being misrepresented into trusting and believing that the person might have your interests first in their mind or at least have to place your interest ahead of theirs. You would be mistaken and then you would be financially abused very often. It is allowed in a winner steal all economy. Here's an image of the actual exemption rules at your local securities commission that allows them to mislead you like this. In fact, they no longer even have to place your interest ahead of their own. This industry document on standard practices says that the suitability standard does not require financial professionals to put their client's best interest before their own. The product need not be in the client's best interest. This is how it works in a winner steal all world. Recently the banking industry ombudsman for complaints was fired by RBC and Toronto Dominion. They preferred to hire their own private mediator to mediate disputes and customer complaints. Would you play in a sporting arena if the referee was paid by the other team? You certainly are in a winner steal all banking world. Asset backed commercial paper was the recipient of many dozen exemptions to the law so that an illegal and insufficiently rated investment product could be dumped on Canadians. If you are a resident of Canada, your taxes were robbed by the $35 billion toxic mortgage backed security scam, which had to be bailed out. This is winner steal all economics in Canada. If you're a resident of the province of Alberta, you were robbed a second time by a $1 billion loss in toxic mortgage investments that were sold to the Alberta Treasury branch. They put 47 cents of every dollar on deposit into these investments and your taxes had to bail them out. If you're a taxpayer in the city of Lethbridge, you're a victim three times by a $30 million loss when the city of Lethbridge bought these same faulty, exempt investments. This is winner steal all economics. If you're a judge or a retired RCMP officer in Canada, then you've also been robbed a fourth time due to your public service pension plan of Canada being cheated out of $2 billion in a winner steal all economic scheme. Laws governing criminal code violations are not easy to apply to the giants of the financial services industry, and so they don't get applied. No police will generally act on securities crimes. In fact, they will practically stand on their heads to avoid acting in a winner steal all economy. If you're a mutual fund investor, you will have been robbed by half or more of your life savings by any one of a dozen tricks of the trade. This image is from a YouTube presentation titled Pink Slime in Your Investments. You can find it on my YouTube channel. And here is just one example showing 91% of mutual funds sold in 2007 were some of the most expensive and self-serving choices to the seller and his or her commission. 91% mutual fund wraps in a winner steal all economic climate. Mutual funds skimming, cheating, overcharging, extra billing, double dipping, commission gouging, and a few other tricks. 
A University of Toronto Rotman School of Business professor named Keith Ambashir studies pensions and he suggests that the retail investor in Canada takes a $25 billion haircut each and every year. This is winter steal all thinking in my opinion. In my experience, policing agencies in Canada refer all of their complaints to self-regulatory bodies or agents so that consumers are always sent to tainted or one-sided referees, perhaps captured regulators. You, in fact, will be sent to kangaroo courts by the industry when you discover that you've been cheated in Canada. Canadians thus get the privilege of being cheated twice, once out of their money and once out of justice in a winter steal all economic environment. I was in Ottawa when Bill C-21 was dis debated minimum sentences for white collar crime. The neat winter steal all trick here was allowing Canada's largest financial giants to delete a section of the criminal code that made this bill apply to them. Section 380 fraud has a subsection 2 that applied public markets fraud and they actually cut that entire section out of this bill as it was being passed. That's what happens in a winner steal all economic environment. Your provincial re government regulator will not even deal with you if you have complaints. They refer you to the investment industry itself. Again, kangaroo court comes to mind in a winner steal all world. This is page one from page one of the 2011 report of the Alberta Securities Commission. Their mandate, number one mandate, says that they're here to protect the public by ensuring that those who operate in this market comply with Alberta securities laws. So therefore, there's no win or steal all mentality here. Unfortunately, though, we skip to page eight and they start talking about letting certain people be exempt from Alberta laws, raising $12 billion nearly by relying on exemptions from the Securities Act of Alberta. This is, in fact, winner steal all mentality at work. The economic and financial system is rigged against you by the very people who say, trust me, I am here to help you. Or they might say you're richer than you think. Or even the role of the Securities Commission is to protect the public. These are all great promises. I find they're not often to be lived up to in a winner steal all economy. On YouTube I've produced some of these examples so that you can go and research them yourself or forward them to friends and family. I'd like you to be able to help people protect themselves and change things for the better. The examples I've given you are cause and effect that result in billions of dollars being taken from your economy your society and the, and the fabric of your very civilization, I believe. This 80-year-old woman was protesting the winter steal all economy and she was pepper sprayed for doing so. I guess she's now a terrorist in a winter steal all world. Some public servants and many authorities in the financial institutions that you trust are in fact selling you out. I'm told they're using you as a source of fish food by people who are well informed. So you've got the quick 10 minute version of how rules and apply and laws apply to bank robbers but not to banks who rob customers. It's like unraveling a large ball of yarn to follow the crimes and the secrets of those at the top of the economic food chain. We've looked at what a winner steal all economy looks like. We've seen what happens when there are no repercussions, no enforcement of the laws. I hope you'll smile the next time a politician tells you that we have the strongest banks in the world. We may, but at what cost? The cost of 30 million Canadians who are being abused by systemic crime. Please visit this website. Go to the topic, Getting Your Money Back, if you're a victim of the winner steal all mentality. Those who play this economic game, they're breaking the law to do it. They're just unfortunately above the law at this moment in time. And until 10 people or 100 or 1,000 take the right steps to change that, it'll remain. There's some ideas at this site to bring about that change. This is my view of the financial world in Canada. I've lived in it for over 30 years now. I don't claim to have all the answers, and I'm sure I'm missing many. 
but I would like the public to imagine a different side than what they're told by people with a very large salary to protect. Please join me on Facebook and we will create a small army of people working together to get their money back. I thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation and to share it with your friends and people who might be interested in the solution. Thank you.